Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam from Houston Texas and this is cardiology seminars this is cardiology seminars brought to you by Triple N Media channel where we have more than 200 cardiology lectures and we welcome you to watch uh, these presentations we also request you to kindly please do subscribe to our youtube channel and let us begin with our feature presentation before we proceed with our feature presentation i would like to invite you to look at my cardiology rotations manual and i will tell you how you can get a free copy of this manual at the end of this presentation let us begin with the feature presentation alpha and beta adrenergic agents stimulants and blockers dopamine and vasopressin how they act where they act and how do we use them the sympathetic system has a extensive network of alpha adrenergic receptors it also has beta 1 and beta 2 adrenergic receptors then we have the dopamine receptors and we have the vasopressin receptors all these work predominantly on vascular system and on organs let's start off with adrenergic alpha 1 agents they work on the smooth muscles of the arterial or system which leads to vasoconstriction and it also increases the force of uh, contraction of the heart muscle so it has some inotropic effect the drugs that are in this category would include epinephrine which is predominantly alpha stimulant and to certain degree beta 1 stimulant and similarly norepinephrine which has lot more alpha stimulation compared to beta stimulation and it acts through the peripheral arteriolar system adrenergic alpha 2 receptors are located in the central nervous system in the arterioles and also in the pancreas they cause sedation they also cause analgesia analgesia they also cause analgesia they cause vasodilatation and in fact they bring down the blood pressure the most common drugs that we are familiar with include clonidine which is a centrally acting alpha 2 agonist and then methyl dopa which was the old fashioned or aldomet which we used to use like 20 30 years ago for control of blood pressure they had to be taken they had to be taken 3 to 4 times a day adrenergic beta 1 receptors are located predominantly in the cardiac muscle in the sinus node and in the atrioventricular junction so it's primarily located in the heart and in the conduction system stimulation of the beta 1 increases the force and contractility of the heart and uh, blocking the beta 1 receptors would lead to reduce contractility reduce heart rate which is what we see with these drugs the drugs that increase the adrenergic beta 1 receptor activity would include dobutamine which increases the contractility of the ventricle causes some peripheral vasodilatation with very minimal changes in the heart rate unless we are using big doses whereas metoprolol which is a beta blocker it acts predominantly on beta 1 receptors thus reducing the heart rate reducing the contractility reducing oxygen myocardial uh, demand and thus helping in patients with heart failure along with its uh, mild peripheral vasodilatation Let's talk about the adrenergic beta 2 receptors which cause vasodilatation and bronchodilatation. The drugs which are most familiar would be isoproterenol which is a cardiac effect and uh, levobuterol and uh, metaproterenol. These are the bronchodilators that are commonly used today in treating patients with bronchospasm, COPD, asthma. Anyway, getting back to isoproterenol, isoproterenol is a drug which uh, works uh, in increasing the heart rate in patients uh, 
with uh, severe bradycardia. The dopamine, which most of you are familiar with, it acts on the vascular system in the kidneys, in the splanchnic organs, heart, cerebral vascular beds. It causes vasodilatation. Higher receptor activation causes vasoconstriction. In low dose, it acts like a vasodilator. It improves renal perfusion. It improves urine output. It maintains blood pressure. But as we go beyond 10 micrograms per kg per minute, uh, the vasoconstrictive action becomes a predominant uh, one, which leads to increased systemic vascular resistance and increased blood pressure. Vasopressin acts on vasopressin smooth muscle receptors and its predominant action is vasoconstriction which is used in patients with hypotension or shock. So based on the location of these receptors, based on their organs which they affect and based on the mechanism of their actions, we have various drugs that can alter the systemic uh, part of the autonomic nervous system. Knowing this will help us to look at in our next video about drugs that we are going to be using for maintaining contractility, maintaining cardiac output, maintaining vascular resistance and maintaining adequate urine output. So the whole purpose of this uh, basic science approach is to see how we can take this knowledge and apply it at bedside and choose the most appropriate drug for a given situation. Here's a different way to look at these uh, agents. Alpha-1 acts predominantly on the blood vessels. It uh, causes vasoconstriction, increases systemic vascular resistance, and mean arterial pressure. Beta-1 acts on the myocardium. It increases uh, chronotropy and inotropy, whereas beta blockers do the reverse. Beta-2 acts pulmonary vasculature, I mean alveolar cells and bronchodilatation. And dopamine, of course, uh, it dilates the renal arteries in the smaller doses up to five micrograms. Then later on, it may increase the systemic vascular resistance. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to get a free copy of my book, Cardiology Rotations Manual, which has almost 170 pages of chock full information on how to survive cardiology rounds, please send me an email to drnicknickum at gmail.com and I will be happy to send you a free copy of Cardiology Rotations Manual. And this has been a cardiology seminar brought to you by Triple N Media. And please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will see you next time when we're going to talk about uh, inotropes, vasopressors, and drugs used in shock patients.